sir our other session sir last two four days all things are going on sir kathin sir sir it is fine but today it is after the session are the two session from the industry people oh very good sir nice the possible you can also still join yeah sure sir so two of them from one from bangalore another one is from pune oh sir so we already have tie up with the pro uh, only sir in automation in okay, bangalore right, right. Uh, okay. we have developing our industry 4.0 lab sir right so right, right. adding the cobot for uh, 35 lakhs okay. and uh, other uh, software iot related software sir PDC okay. thick box we are buying for uh, 13 lakhs and AGV and 3D printing. They are already in the under process that is going on. Maybe next time uh, I, I can show some of videos on that. Okay. Actually, uh, yes. we started robotics and automation branch this year. Oh. So maybe one day, Saturday or Sunday, we can plan for a webinar for the students. Sure, sure, sir. No, no problem. Okay. I will I'll say, I will just, I will... I'll fix a date and get it back. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. I'm doing the college of us, but after the college of us, one hour you can give you some input. Yeah, sir. Sure. Great, thank you. And also, <coughs> I'm very happy to share with you that Dr. Karthikeyan, as a principal investigator, we got 17 lakhs ACT model so, plan. Yeah, so nice, sir. That one yeah, yeah. for research in automation and uh, CNC lab. Yeah, sir. In the same lab, we are sitting and we are conducting another ACT program. Okay. Are all the participants in the MAPIC inform of Muru Rajan is my student? I told all this. Second, second batch of same college values are working presently. It's a ME gold medalist. And they, a lot of work should be completed. Uh, registered a PhD in IIT and completed and still is working in the same college. The student of the same college and also now he's heading the department. Yes. Okay, congrats. Okay, this is a happy occasion. See our students grow like uh, sure, the okay. Sure, okay, let us start the session. So this yes. is the so already we know Dr. Hey Murugajan, uh, speaker for the previous sessions. Uh, now again I welcome uh, Dr. Hey Murugajan sir uh, for the session formally. And also I welcome all the participants for the, the last day. There is five days ACT training and learning at an online faculty development program on lean manufacturing in industry 4.0 scenario. So on behalf of uh, Rajarashvi College of Engineering, on behalf of all the participants, and as well as from head of the department and principal Rajarashvi College of Engineering, I would like to invite Dr. A. Murugarajan for the session one of day five. Again, I introduce uh, Dr. A. Murugarajan, uh, professor and head of the department, Robotics and Automation, Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College, Coimbatore. He is currently working as a professor in the Department of Robotics and Automation at uh, Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College, Coimbatore. He received his PhD in Mechanical Engineering from Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. He has obtained his Master's Degree in Industrial Engineering uh, as a University Gold Medalist and Bachelor's Degree in Mechanical Engineering with a distinction from Bharatiya University, Coimbatore. Also, he has completed the MBA in Operations Management in UGNO, New Delhi. He has 20 years of academic and five years of his experience. His major fields of interest are in the area of mechanical measurements, methodology, optimization techniques in engineering, and operations management, predictive data analytics, machine tool and machine tool methodology using sensors, and national fibers composites manufacturing. He has published 24 research papers in reputed international journals and conferences. He has been associated with industrial consultancy projects by SREC Innovation Center. He is the technical member and reviewer of peer-reviewed international journals. He is currently guiding four research scholars and three PhD theses awarded under him. He has been invited as a chairperson and resource person in conference, symposiums, and workshops organized by various institutions. So he is currently involved in MBA accreditation process and program facilitator and mentor for MBA outcome-based assessment. So again, I welcome you, sir. Welcome to the session, sir. Well, thank you for your uh, introduction. Uh, so. Um... So good morning to everyone present here, the participants. I think uh, you are uh, entering into the last day of this uh, online FDP on lean manufacturing in uh, industry 4.0. Uh, so once again, I have to thank my mentor and teacher, uh, Dr. Kathian Sar, giving me the opportunity and also thank uh, the organizers and management and uh, uh, the principal of uh, Raja Rajeshwari College of Engineering, Bangalore. So 
we have to go into the topic so uh, the today's uh, topic what i have to uh, deliver, deliver to use uh, smart sensors for uh, industry 4.0 and digital manufacturing so this is one of the topic uh, but uh, the thing is uh, now uh, the industry, everywhere when we have been talking about the uh, manufacturing uh, so the uh, talking about the industrial sector everyone is talking about the industry 4.0 uh, but what it is, I think last few uh, days, I think last three or four days, I think most of the experts that have been talking about the industry 4.0. But however, from my point of view, from my perspective, when I'm going to talk about how the sensors are going to play the major role in industry 4.0, because whatever the technology, uh, whatever the communication media, but thing is how the, the sensing devices will help you to enhancing the industry 4.0. That's what I'm going to talk about in the uh, this is the, this particular uh, session. So, uh, it, uh, as I told already, the smart manufacturing, digital manufacturing, all are uh, terms which have been used by the different uh, countries. But however, the heart of any manufacturing, in particular with uh, uh, smart or digital or industry 4.0, the sensors are the one of the heart of the any kind of manufacturing. Because when you're going to looking about the uh, our uh, system, our, our body system, we have five organs. So five sensing elements generally. So air, nose, like that. So how these sensing elements will uh, understand our body mechanism and react something. But similarly for when you're going into the machine tools. So how it may be. So that's what um, uh, today's topic I'm going to deliver on this particular uh, 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 topic, uh, smart sensors for industry 4.0. So come to the my presentation slide. So today's uh, contents of my presentation will starts from uh, industry 4.0 and uh, digital manufacturing because uh, both are maybe a, uh, almost similar term, but some of the uh, communication aspect and other uh, usage of computer aspect it may be vary. But anyway, I'm going to talk about the industry 4.0. Then we go into the sensors in industry 4.0. So what kind of sensors? How it plays? Then now we have in the era of sensors 4.0. Uh, then we are to going to talk about, so what is a smart sensor? That's a very important because it's a topic uh, that's what we are making interest on today. So smart sensors, so what it is. I have shown some of simple videos. I think I want to have collected from different sources that I have to show to you. Then the role of smart sensors in industry 4.0. Then, uh, so what it for, we have to go for summary, summary of, so how the sensor is going to play major role in, in the coming days in industry 4.0 in industry 5.0 also okay so uh, come to the industry 4.0 then everyone knows about uh, the revolution of uh, the industry starts from uh, the old stone age into mechanization using uh, water and power uh, sorry water and steam they have using the first revolution then automatically then auto then the next generation goes through after the, the electrical inventions so the second revolution of industry they started to making uh, yeah, semi-automation devices and third uh, generation it starts from 1970s onwards after the invention of uh, IC circuits then slowly uh, IC circuits and computers play the major role in controlling all your uh, uh, components and equipments in the machine tools then finally now we are in the stage of uh, not in stage we are the transition stage of uh, the computers through how uh, the uh, automation to take the decision making process, self decision making process like um, uh, using of uh, AI tools and uh, industrial IoT concept. That's what uh, now is emerging. So still, uh, as uh, uh, everyone is talking about the industry 4.0, uh, but the thing is, this particular uh, uh, industry 4.0 uh, coined by Germany people during 1990s. They started. Uh, they're talking about the how to connecting these all computer, all uh, machine tools. That's the way they started. The the only they use the word is uh, the industry uh, 4.0. So there we have started 1998, something on the road of 1995 they started. So still we have been talking about the industry 4.0 in the different spectrum, like uh, each and every stage, the yeah, connectivity between the machine tools and uh, the. Okay, so uh, so when talking about the industry 4.0, the sensors 
are the major role in every uh, uh, sector of industrial revolution. The first and second revolution, that's not that much of sensors not play the major role. But anyway, however, we are using some kind of mechanical sensors. But in third and fourth industrial revolutions, the sensors play the major role. Okay. So come to the uh, the industry 4.0. So ultimately, what's the purpose of this industry 4.0? Why we want to go to the industry 4.0? Because the problem is, um, you know, that uh, we have uh, using a number of machine tools, the latest technologies, but how we are going to connecting those things. So when the industry have a number of machines, so how we are connecting all the machines and the elements which is present in your, and the, in your machine tool or industry. That's what we call this a smart factory. So that's what also we are uh, interested to create a smart factory which have connected to all your machines and all your machines have these informations in your dashboard telling you about that what are the movements like um, starts from how many number of components are finished then what's the process is going on then what's the speed and other parameters which is involved in processing your machine tools in the machines so everything it will be recorded it will be monitored it will be diagnostic and finally if you have any malfunction also how you have to take overcome those difficulties how you're going to take those issues take the decision making process also so this all to come together in the industry 4.0 that's what when you're talking about the industry 4.0 so the major is uh, the you have to connecting the entire factory into the uh, total cloud there you have to store and uh, you are uh, storing all your data if it come from your machine tool finally you are going to process this particular data then the data is useful for to taking the decision making so that's why they're talking here so that's what we call is a networking all uh, not only the the factory uh, the factory which you have all over the globe so you have connecting to your network and at which you have to decide so what we have to do that's what uh, the industry 4.0 now is emerging but still it's in the transition stage in Indian perspective. Uh, then the digital manufacturing point of view, mostly what we were talking about the digital manufacturing, mostly we're talking about the, uh, the computer system, computer enabled manufacturing services and other uh, ch chain of your materials, which flow from raw material to the end of the product. So that's what we're talking about the digital manufacturing point of view. There's a small connectivity between this industry 4.0 and digital manufacturing. So digital manufacturing generally what we call is you are through computers, but thing is industry 4.0, slowly we are connecting through all computers and then we can connect to the cloud and connecting the, the entire system uh, of your, what are the machine tools, what are the factories you should have, you can connect to the, that uh, particular process. So uh, industry 4.0 also you can see as the industrial internet of things. That's what uh, uh, mostly these two terms are uh, uh, somewhat they are currently they are uh, using this in industrial automation. Then they're called industry automation and control only. But the thing is, uh, what kind of uh, technology we have using? So based on this, uh, they are making a version one, two, like that. So that's why the industry 4.0 come in the picture here. Because uh, you know that uh, now the current uh, uh, situation, current uh, manufacturing scenario, current scenario in uh, the globe, everything is getting smarter because you are generating the data in each and every level, not only for uh, the production process, so whatever we are wearing from smart devices, smart devices, when we are going to use it in my our car. So whenever you're using your mobile phone or maybe your uh, bike or you know, go to the home, smart home or maybe whatever maybe is there. So the thing is we are generating the data. Generally, starts from smart devices, you are generating the data in different levels. But thing is how this data will be used to far to improve your quality and productivity. That's what some major one. If you're talking about in the production point of view, manufacturing point of view, so this is already most important. So how you are going to use this data? Because the first thing. The second thing is how we are going to generate the data. Because we want to generate the data, you need some kind of elements, some kind of devices. Okay, so once I've decided, oh, so once I've uh, uh, chosen the uh, the production process, but thing is, I want to say that uh, which particular uh, uh, way I have to take, uh, generating the data and how we are going to driving and driving my data and how this data to be used to far to useful for my purposes purposes like to improve the productivity and uh, quality of my system. So that's what when we want to use the voice is a little bit low. Thank you. 
So, uh, when, you, when you're going for this motor, when you're using your uh, production process, so without the sensors, it is not at all possible because you have to generate the data because I want to know that when you're using your machine tool, I want to know that what particular speed is running now. So what is the torque? What is the displacement is happening here? So each and everything I want to know because when you are doing traditionally, you are the, uh, the worker having uh, interfacing, interconnecting, communicating with the machine tool where he is using this all your hand and uh, eyesight at which it will observe this all information at which you have to complete the process. But thing is, when the automation comes in the place, we are only depending on how we are going to use the sensors and sensing elements at which to capture the, the movement of all motion of all machine tools, all motions at which you are going to monitor and control. So, so without sensor, it is not that possible. But how the sensor becomes smarter, that's another one. But in uh, already uh, two decades before we have started, uh, or three decades before we have started the uh, using of sensors, it may be a separate entities, like a separate. So you have to connect the sensor in a different way, that the sensor data to be converted in some other form. Then finally, the form, the data to be recorded, the recorded data to be processed. Then after that only, so it is like a yeah, open loop system. There's no, there's no possible. So that's what, so last three decades before they started now, so the technology is emerging like anything. So how we have to use the smart sensors. So to generating the data at which to, to take your decision making. That's what, yay, everywhere we have been talking about, yay, artificial intelligence. <coughs> Sorry, one of the, the major one. So one of the major two. So without AI now everywhere, so whatever we are we talking, so AI this because we are crossing any uh, any shop. So your mobile phone have observing that uh, you are staying in this particular area. So it will automatically show in your Facebook shows that you went this particular place, you are interested or not. So like that it will show uh, automatically if you are opening your Facebook or if you are opening any website, it will show to you. So it will recognize based on, it will observe where you are staying, where you are going. So it will uh, create, it will generate the data. Data is to be processed and it, it takes a decision. So what you are liking, what you are deciding. So like that, uh, it will start to do in your, uh, in your whenever you are seeing searching anything, it will show in your uh, right hand side column or somewhere, it will like an uh, advertisement, it will come into it. That's what the AI play the major role. So ultimately, if you are using the smart sensors, ultimately the functional point of view, the monitoring, configuration and uh, and uh, 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 configuration and conditioning monitoring. So condition monitoring is, so we have a, a proper condition, you have to take the decision on each and every stages of the process. So the word is very important when you're going to smarter, always, uh, always we can say self monitoring, self configuration and self condition monitoring. So I will show you a small video. I think uh, you have to understand this uh, process. Okay. I think my video is visible. I have any problem, please. It's audible, sir. Visible. Yeah. New technologies are changing the world. They're also making the cars manufactured by the Volkswagen Group more efficient, safer, and more customer friendly. The nature of car manufacturing is also changing in a similar way. In fact, the next batch of innovations is so extraordinary that experts are already declaring the dawn of a new industrial era, Industry 4.0. So what does manufacturing look like today? Traditional car production involving hundreds of identical vehicles lined up in a row no longer exists. The options available to customers are now... So now the concept of lean manufacturing. individual object. Cars are now manufactured to order. Data makes its way from the customer's order to the Volkswagen Group systems and then to each individual section of production. A car consists of many thousands of individual parts. The press shop processes blanks for the bodywork. In the body shop, the car is baptized. In other words, it's given an RFID tag that can track it via radio frequency. 
This establishes which car body belongs to which customer order. The paint shop also receives information from the system world. In sequencing storage, the cars are placed in an optimal order for assembly. From here, information is transmitted to suppliers and crew assembly as to which part is required when and where. In final assembly, the finished car emerges. The Volkswagen Group manufactures its cars using state-of-the-art technology, but development and innovation never stop. What does the future hold in store? Yeah. So if you could see here, so the uh, whenever you are ordering the car, whenever you're ordering the, the product, uh, so the starts from the first sensing element like RP, making your tag. So tag does you have to identify which order, which particular customer we need one. So the tag giving the entire information about your uh, your uh, the customer uh, requirement of uh, the to be stored. So if you're going to retry wherever the reference is what you convert it to be. Uh, your final product, final shape or final product. Okay. So uh, when talking about the uh, the digital manufacturing point of view or the industry 4.0 point of view, thing is it's always an integrated approach uh, to manufacturing uh, with uh, uh, all uh, the components. But thing is the computer system is a centralized one. So the computer system only able to able to connecting all manufacturing system. So it will store and retrieve the data and communicating the data. And it may be giving the information to the uh, your production system in the rough of different way, like uh, yeah, using your computer softwares and uh, the computer production systems and whatever maybe. So, so everything through starts from your uh, the CAD design. Then you can start. So this CAD design converted into a different kind of uh, yeah models at which it go to the different if a different the machine tool uh, it goes to the machine tools at which. They have to uh, converting into the uh, record shape, uh, record uh, uh, elements like uh, the record files, and it will go to process in the different stages of your operation. Whether it's maybe a, a body shop or maybe maybe assembly shop. So based on how the CAD model. So the CAD model is designed based on uh, the the, uh, the customer requirements. So once the order is right. So it starts with the digital manufacturing starts from this way is always an integrating approach to the manufacturing where the computer system will play the major role. So why I'm connecting to the sensors point of view? Because whenever we are connected to the sensor point of view, I think is the digital technology will be most vulnerable to processing the data point of view. Because everything uh, whenever the sensor is giving some kind of information like uh, you write the shape or the color. So once it is identified, you will really verify with your the data at what the customer wants, what color customer. So everything will come in the picture when the uh, when it goes to be the digital manufacturing point. So what are the technologies in um, uh, in uh, industry 4.0? Uh, the first thing is uh, what we have looking into on this one is a product life cycle. First, uh, the three most important is uh, product life cycle because how uh, the entire system to be uh, used to stats from raw material to the end of the product. The second thing is uh, the smart factory. That's what uh, uh, now we have been talking about here is uh, uh, the smart factory. So everywhere, <coughs> sorry, everywhere uh, we have been talking about the smart factory. Now in this report point zero, we have been talking about smart factory. But how we are going to enable in the smart factory based on only the sensors and IoT tools. IoT tools, Internet of Things. How we are connecting those sensors and uh, the systems. So that's what. So uh, it always involves about all smart machines, smart sensors, smart tooling, and all the process are having a feedback. So at which we are integrating this uh, through your computer system at which you are monitoring and taking a decision making process. That's what, how we are going to digitally have to transform. And you have to visibly, you can see that what's the process are going on in the fa factory and wherever you possible, you have to optimize it. Uh, once you are collecting the data, then you have to uh, correct uh, once uh, you are and so once you are collecting the data, then you have to take the decision. Then when the processes are under process, under process, so how are you going to control the process also? You should have in your hand.
in the end. So the smart factory point of view, so it involves the machines also have all our smarts, smart connectivity and smart sensors, the smart devices. So at which you are generating the data. So the based on the data, that's what we are, we are purchasing one of the software, PTC ThinkWorks. So there is one of the IoT based platform software, whatever software in your system, you can connect through your um, internet, uh, connect through your web source, uh, through uh, the data to be generated. Even if I'm working in my system, so what are the temperature, uh, you are generated during our my lecture. So it will monitor, it will be monitored. So it will be transferring your data through, uh, it will go into store in the cloud. So it will say that if you are working for more time, so you are maybe for the process the That's what the smart factory point of view has to then the value chain management, then we have a talk about the uh, innovative technology. That's why innovative technology is the technology. Uh, as I told already, the first point is smart factory, but how can you So it's not audible, sir. It's audible, sir. Keep the mic to Not audible, sir. Not audible. I think everything's fine by my side. Yeah. Now, yes, 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 audible, sir. Now, no audible, sir. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Now, same also, I'll be the same system only. I don't know. Okay, sir. So, the technologies for metalizing industry 4.0, there are four major factors like one is a life cycle of your product and smart factory, because this is one of the most important ones when you're metalizing industry 4.0. Then, the third one, fourth one is uh, value chain, uh, as I told already. So value chain management is one of the most important one. Now also the emerging supply chain of your all your activities. Then the innovative technologies like uh, the cloud computing and AI. I think a cyber physical system, CPS will come in the picture here. Uh, but however, uh, the cyber physical system is involved about the cloud computing and AI. So without AI and the cloud computing, because once you are generating the data, so where you have to store, where it will be. So you have the so it's having a big data. How are we going to process this big data? That's what they're talking about the big data, big data analytics. They're simple statistical tools, but it will go to give you the more important uh, ways of, <coughs> sorry, ways of giving uh, information to your, your production process, okay? Uh, so come to the uh, smart factory, because uh, when you're talking about the, uh, the industry 4.0, the first, uh, the foremost thing is, how we are going to enable your factory become a smarter one. But thing is, uh, because when you're talking about the uh, the factories point of view, you know that uh, uh, each and every factory have uh, a number of uh, machine shops, machine tools, and like that. But thing is, it will be categorized. So each factory have a lot of production shops, uh, uh, engineering shops also there. But how we are going to connect in the all entire factory? So that's what uh, the mostly the industry uh, 4.0, the smart factory point of view. How we are going to enabling the uh, the robots the minimum human intervention point of view, how the robots and sensors are connected to, the factory, to connecting the entire robots and uh, sensors to visualize the, the what kind of information flow uh, in, the, in your factory. That's what is very, very important one. So you should know the relationship between the each and every stages of, because the product has come from the warehouse. So warehouse, it recorded that this particular product goes to the machine tool number one. The machine tool number one, the robo one will take that one. So the data to be driven from, starts from the stages of uh, the product, the raw material comes from your storehouse, warehouse, then it goes to the final product, uh, to the end customer point of view. So how this, uh, the factory to be enabled through usage of this all the latest devices like robots and sensors. So the robot sensors play the major role in to connecting this um, uh, 
the factory become uh, so connecting this all machine tools and networking and visualizing the entire information we call as a smart factory without the robots because as i told already the factory become smart so you have to use the minimum human intervention that's very very important word the word is very important word if you want minimum human intervention means how we are going to monitor how we are going to control how we are going to record the data to the sensor so if you want to minimize your human intervention you have to deploy the robots so that's what the robots and sensors play the major role but thing is how we are going to connect those robots and sensors the first thing because each and every robot have n number of sensors but thing is how we are going to control your robot and uh, the robot can communicate with the machine tools so how the sensors will play the major role so that's why that, that connectivity between your robot and machine tool is only based on the sensors because it will says that robot want to pick the part from the cnc machine but the cnc machine says that i have come to my part so once this complete part is completed so the door is open so the door is open to recognize by the robot then only you going to know who and pick up the uh, part so there are so many ways and steps out there but how we do interfacing how we are going to connect it visualizely we have to know those informations and we are connecting those informations and we have to process it that's what's very important one when talking about smart factory similarly if you have n number of factories if you have four or five factories in your so how we are going to entire factory all factories to be connected because where whatever i am doing a part number one in factory number one suppose some other factory some other part the order which is come from your customer maybe they are manufacturing the factory to some kind of interconnecting so the computer can recognize that the other process uh, in the factory to so it want to execute once it comes to the factory one only it will going to start your process so it will going to communicate based on this it's making a smart plan so that's what the smart factory enabling is based on the what kind of sensors what kind of robots you are placing here a small video on this particular one i think this video is audible i think you have any problem yes Sir, my video is audible. Visible, sir. Yeah, it's visible. Visible. Okay. <laughs> Leader in industrial automation, Siemens has recognized the challenges for profitable growth in a competitive industry. Siemens is growing from being the global market leader in automation to industry leadership as a supplier of integrated hardware and software systems. To achieve this, Siemens is focused on optimizing the complete value chain, becoming faster from product design to high quality production. In the electronic works on board, about 1000 employees produce semantic switch gears and control systems at the highest level. One of the characteristic features of the best works in Europe, a distinction Hamburg was given, is the extraordinary high quality at a production rate of one product per second and a delivery time of 24 hours. In order to attain the best possible combination of both design and production, the Hamburg works uses the product lifecycle management software portfolio, Team Center, NX, and Semantic IT. Facilitate a near perfect closed loop data consistency. The rules and processes laid down in the system ensure that the data are transferred correctly and automatically with the right technical information. Team Center serves as a data backbone for all PLM tools. One of the competitive advantages of the Electronic Works Onboard is that development and production are closely and systematically interlinked, which means that innovations can enter production very quickly. The manufacturing processes are optimized rapidly by means of digital prototypes at an early stage. By simulating the processes, the production can be adapted perfectly to the products to be manufactured. So this is stage we have been talking about the digital manufacturing. So where we have to simulate it and using your computer software. So then we have to go for the, the final time to market can be reduced by up to fifty percent with simultaneous increases in quality. Totally integrated automation. and the tier portal mean complete data consistency and automation and full coherent access to engineering which enables the electronic works on board to optimize its automation solutions this in turn leads to cost savings of up to 25% 
Moreover, the manufacturing execution system, Semantic IT, ensures maximum production rates and highest flexibility. Due to intelligent data linkage, it is possible to take influence on the production processes in real time. So the Electronic Works Onboard can deliver its products at a quality rate of 99.9985%. This means only 1.5 of 100,000 manufactured products are faulty. By using Siemens industry software, the time to market cycles in the Electronic Works Onboard were reduced significantly, while costs were cut. The quality was optimized to the highest possible degree and is now nearly at a rate of 100%. The high efficient logistics allow our... Okay, so uh, this is one of the Siemens uh, factory, they're manufacturing the, uh, the uh, circuit boards. So there they are making, a, using the Six Sigma concept at which they have to make 99.9% percentage of uh, quality they're ensuring. But I think as each and every stage they have using the sensors to ensure that uh, the process are happening then interlinking the entire production process. So that is one of the major tool here. So come to the, the sensors point of view because we are uh, we want to interest in sensors. The sensors point of view, so entire factory system, whatever we have been talking here, the foundations come starts from. So what kind of sensors, what kind of actuators we have been using here? Because sensors won't sense it, then the actuators also kind of a sensor. We have to motivate, uh, we have to do some kind of action. So the for that because action to be how much action to be uh, more, um, to be happen how much motion to be happen depends upon the, the sensing element so the sensors are the basic one it may be connected to the plc so when you're talking about any permit of any kind of industry 4.0 the sensors are on the base for any kind of system further it can be connected to the program logical controller then you can connect to the human interface and finally the making a manufacturing execution where the entire factory are digitally connected then connected to the work enterprises resource planning where we are going to planning your entire system connected to your customer's point of view. Okay, so when talking about the uh, sensors flow, uh, that's what the word is very, very important um, uh, because this analogy to industry 4.0, the what are the development of sensors uh, for the last three or four uh, decades, uh, there may be a different entity there because entities like the sensing element is different than the conversion element, then finally, processing element and uh, and there are then the storage element so there are different stages are there there are separate entities but in 4.0 what we have been talking about all are embedded together that's what the embedding uh, of some sensors embedded sensors will come in the picture here so this embedded sensors are yeah, self calibrated uh, self uh, diagnostic and self um, uh, testing element so where it will give you it will it will store the data and retrieve the data and it will go to communicate your data also. So that's why they're talking about the industries 4.0, how these sensors, sensor 4.0 will go play the major role in the industry, industry 4.0. So generally we know that gen uh, sensors are uh, organs of any machines because you know each and every stage uh, when I'm rotating for the particular speed, when you are moving, displacing for the particular motion, everything depends upon the the feedback which is you are received from your sensor, whether it's maybe encoder or maybe displacement sensor or LVDT or maybe a echo speed generator or encoder. So whatever maybe is there. So the thing is, it will um, it will measure the uh, information over the current state. Then it will give you the information to your uh, controller. So the controller can take the decision whether I have to do it or not, whether I have to allow it or not. So that's what. So when we are going to allow it, uh, when you are going to take the decision by this, the sensor itself there we are going to start about you know, promoting your smart factories so that's what the first the foremost information is how the the sensor can be used as a, a, a basic uh, sensing element primary uh, accusation information then the accusation information will be processed there itself then you'll communicate to your controller there the controller say yes then it will go to process but once upon a stage last three to four decades before what we are using there uh, only the sensors will give you the information it will show you some kind of deflection in your analog uh, meter or maybe a digital meter then you have to record it then after that you have to take those data then uh, after that you have to process it the, it's like a post -mortem. so that's what uh, generally uh what we have used so far but last one decade we have started uh these sensors are communi communicating to 
the your uh, system so there you are writing your program says that if you go beyond that control you have to do this particular operation or beyond, you have to do this particular uh, cutoff or something we have to give this information to the sensor it will go to do the process so that's what uh, they're talking about in the uh, the sensors 4.0 so generally what we do uh, sensors are enabling for the purposes first thing is acquisition the information from that uh, uh, the system then uh, acquisition and uh, collection of the data then the other important part is we have to retrieve the data where it happened already so all the all other ways you can see the tracking also that's what the path planning algorithms uh, when you're going to take a motion when you're going to talking about the automated gate vehicles autonomous vehicles so you have to retrieve the data where already the similar kind of situations are arised before so those data is also compared and uh, it will take the decision that's what uh, the now, uh, nowadays embedded sensor sensors 4.0 is enabling with this kind of informations so previously we have only a sensing element it will convert some form of energy so it will show you some kind of analog signal some kind of voltage signal but you have to process it but thing is here now so the technology it will going to connect to your automation like a plc or any logical controller there it will take the decision then it will go in once again to the sensor then it will it will going to react some so that's what the ai technologies are uh, combined with the sensors so to make the decision autonomously and cooperate with the machines and robots to optimize the production that's what is the most important one thing is how we are going to collecting the data what kind of sensor that's what we are going to see but thing is the connectivity between this uh, the ai technology and sensor is become one of the most important technology nowadays emerging like everything in all over the uh, globe because we have tried with uh, our uh, we creating one of the lab what we called in our department open innovation lab so there uh, the students are uh, they can come with the idea they can create whatever they want they have to create their own experiments using the, the basic sensing elements like we should have almost uh, 60 to 70 type of sensor suppose you have your temperature sensor or you have a pressure sensor or if you have a force sensor suppose uh, if you are using a, i want to uh, they have to create the experiment based on this if you are giving particular force i want to run the particular motor or i want to open the uh, particular door so uh, uh, any door so thing is how we are going to connecting those sensors how we are going to retrieve this data so this is what we have using simple raspberry by arduino board and arm boards so they have to connecting this all then they have to do the perform the job so this is way we are creating a, a small open lab a open innovation lab there the students can create their own experiments in their way they have to start doing to how you are going to enable the, the sensing technologies then we use it for the uh, the decision making process so this is a starting stage of how we are going to using uh, integrating these sensing elements into the your controller this is very very important because it, it combined together only we have to talk about the the smart sensors okay so generally i as i told already so sensors are uh, the organs of any machines so when you want to uh, talking about the in the context of digitized manufacturing so without uh, sensors we can't link to the industry 4.0 because first the thing is you have to sense it and the digitization will help you to start to think what we have to do so how you are going to convert this data because the whether the data is having a valuable information or not so how this valuable information communicate uh, to you are controller there so uh, you are going to take the decision but thing is once upon time uh, once i'm not once upon so still also most of them are using the sensors for a separate entity but thing is how your sensor become intelligent so you are adding the a a means simply you are taking that you are taking decision making whether i have to calibrate or not whether i have having malfunction or not so it's a self calibration point of view it will sense itself then you have to think so i am not uh, uh, i am i am i am already have uh, malfunction so please replace it so it will give you the information to you uh, to the controller says that i am not in the use condition so so such a way so the smart sensors are emerging so this is what the most important when talk, talking about the the prognostics of uh, machine tools point of view it will come in the picture so as i told already this is one of the study long time back they started but still uh, entire things are going to uh, connecting uh, uh, in the all industry 4.0 but thing is still uh, it is going on we are having talking about 2012 to 2014 but still 
is a long way to go uh, still connecting our all our factories or smart, uh, smart factories. There is a big uh, scope is there in coming days uh, due to this COVID-19 pandemic situation. Each and every industry uh, move towards the, the uh, going for the automation because uh, uh, recently we came to know so, so many industries they have been talking about the uh, the shortage of uh, the labors so they started making the automation so uh, maybe a low cost as i said, told already the low cost automation because the uh, the problem is when going for the automation low cost automation see the cost of sensors plays a major role because uh, we know that once upon a time the cost of sensors became very very high but somewhat is declined for the last one decade is declined like anything because there yeah, are small sensors available for 15 rupees to 200 rupees available in our market. So how these sensors to be used for our purposes? But the thing is, uh, you have to always check about the characteristics of sensor because what's accuracy, what's the range, what's the sensitivity of the sensor, it plays the major role. Depends upon the cost, proportionally it will be. That's what um, the one of the major one when talking about the, the current uh, sensing technology, current system. As I told already, the sensors 4.0, how it is emerging like industry 4.0, if you could see this particular uh, picture. So it starts from uh, the old uh, uh, mechanical type of transducers, starts from analog uh, <coughs> meters, where this, we have been talking about the 18th century. Then the invention of uh, the electrical technology 20th century, it starts from electrical strain cages. So exciting voltages. So finally, we are connecting, uh, you are connecting your sensing element to the uh, the mechanical energy convert to the electrical energy or electrical energy convert to the magnetical. So some kind of form of energy converting. So there you are connecting through your excitation with through your voltages. So those voltages may be calibrated to the respective uh, physical quality. That's what is happening in sensor 2.0. Then the sensor 3.0 is embedded. That's what now we are in the transition between this particular stage. As I told already, so we have already in the transition uh, because of cost of uh, the technology, because cost of a sensor is a major over here. Because if you want connecting electronically, I want digitized uh, sensor means. Because I want to capture the data in each and every uh, dynamic situation. So if you want to capture the data, what's the data range? So what's the sensitivity of this data? So per minute or per second, how much data you're going to capture? How you're going to process the data? In other words, maybe yeah, the data can be processed by the sensor sensing uh, microprocessor itself. Otherwise, we have to collect it from the data data acquisition system where you have to use your uh, computer knowledge uh, and take the algorithm to develop your uh, system. So that's the thing are happening with sensors 3.0. But sensors 4.0, it may be all uh, to embedded. So all are connected. If you are buying a sensor, the cost of 500 rupees. So simply a plug and play kind of arrangement so it will come to connect with like a USB if you connect it. So your sensing element, your system is going to recognize, then it will going to store your data. So if you want to connect it through some other system also, through your Wi-Fi or through your through your communication medium, medium, it will transfer your data to your cloud. So there you have to take both monitoring about the entire process. So now the industry 4.0, they are enabling the smart sensors for uh, to uh, take the, the data and the data to be driven for different purposes. So now we are doing with the uh, industry to the sensors 4.0 in the industry. So without uh, sensors, smart sensors, we cannot enable the industry 4.0. Everything is maybe in line and in line and on process condition, we can monitor the entire process. But the complexity is always be there. Whenever we are going for smart sensors, always a very, very complexity. You know that, you know that uh, the smart sensors mainly what we have been talking about thing is how we are going to uh, transform something from human to electronic brain. That's what the word is very, very important word. Uh, this particular film is, uh, uh, I think I saw particular, this particular film, how our brains become electronic brain. So that's what, how the sensing element are integrated and it will take the synthesis point of view. So this is one of the complexity of this particular movie. Uh, there they're talking about the electronic brain the long time before they started but now uh, we have been talking about uh, this smart sensor because for the medical field how uh, we have inserting a, a, a small robot and nano robots to cure your uh, devices cure your diseases where you are is kind of a capsule kind of arrangement there 
it will go and sense the, the place where at which you have to remove the cav cavity or something. So this is where they started uh, for to creating the uh, the smart sensors. So once it senses it, so it will going to react. It, uh, it will going to do some kind of action. So similarly for the electronic brain, so or integrating these all sensors to come mother to use it as an electronic brain. That's what the next generation technology we have been talking about the uh, the sensors. Now you know that sensors are already everywhere. We cannot avoid it wherever we are going, wherever we even starts from our washing machine, but we are using day-to-day -day use it also. You know that the mixes are yay based mixes are coming in the picture. Yay based mixing based on how much load you are uh, giving. So automatically choose your speed. Uh, you won't uh, change the speed number one, two, three. Instead of that, if you are loaded, automatically you sense it. Okay, you are loaded something. So this load, I have to use this particular speed. So it will going to communicate to you. That's what the nowadays, if we are using a digital temperature, because we, you know the current COVID situation, we are using uh, infrared thermometers. So nowadays we are using, we are using also robots for to monitoring your uh, temperatures also. So like that, it will slowly, if you are going to a car, uh, maybe a non-contact keys are coming to picture here. So uh, wireless entries. So it will, once you are sitting in the Porsche, it will say that whether you are wearing seatbelt or not. So when we are living with, uh, so uh, everywhere with the sensors. So if you see mobile phone, you have 15 to 18 sensors. So each sensor having exciting particular frequency, it will observe the, it will uh, observe and it will collect the data of you. So sometimes the data to be processed, sometimes they have to be useful for some other purposes. Like, so if you have more temperature is increased in your mobile phone, it will automatically switch on. So such a way they created the uh, user interface software. So each and every mobile phone operators have a uh, mobile or have a different software. So like the US can say, Google Android is a basic platform there. They are using their inter version, uh, uh, their operating system at which to optimizing the entire performance based on the the sensing uh, based because I know that what kind of motion I have captured, how, how much time the camera is working. So say based on this only, it will going to optimize your power at which it will going to restore your battery. So that's what the sensors are already everywhere. We can't avoid it. So wherever we are going, we can now also we are using a communication media, we are using a camera. So we are using a mic. So whatever I'm speaking, it will convert it. So, the sensors are everywhere. We cannot avoid it. But thing is how we have to use it <coughs> as a smart sensor. So that's what the uh, we have a n number of types of sensors are available by, as per by physical quality, as a mechanical aspect, or, or maybe a, a research aspect. You know, acceleration, vibration measurement, chemical gas analysis point of view, acoustics point of view, flow measurement point of view, force measurement point of view, like that machine vision point of view, pressure and temperature is point of view. How these sensing uh, types can we convert as a smart? That's what we call as all is uh, different forms. The same sensors may come in the different forms, smart sensors, smartphones, smart car. Once upon a time, we have a separate uh, where cameras are there, but now the mobile phone have including with uh, the camera. So um, if you could see here, uh, la Previously, what we see analog watches, now we have smart watches. So where we have to connecting your mobile phone with your smart watches. So similarly, the technologies are growing like that. That's why the smart car, smart grid, uh, power applications, smart TV, smart home, smart factory, smart building, smart home. So there we are talking about all. They all are digitized with all informations. But thing is information of the data. But how we are going to collect the data? That's why the sensors giving those informations. That's why it will translating the uh, physical world into the digital world. So the ultimate purpose of uh, the sensors are, that's what they, so uh, you're going to turn, it will going to sense it, it will going to uh, detect it, it will going to smell it, it will going to measure it. So it may be predicted, then it will give you some kind of information. So these information to be useful for the feedback purposes, for response purposes, for conditioning purposes, for monitoring purposes, for feed forwarding purposes for the next application. So that's what the most important thing is, how these all sensors together is become a yeah, smart phone or a smart car or a smart factory. So that's what we're talking about the, the smart sensors. So smart sensors point of view, when the concept of smart manufacturing, with the perspective of measurement point of view, because uh, when talking about the industry 4.0, smart manufacturing will come in the picture where 
we are collecting the uh, all data then uh, how you are going to uh, evaluate the real time performance the most important thing is the in process measurement so how uh, the in process way so in process in 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 process to be undergo undergoing where you are going to take your measurement you know that current state of your data because when you are machining for 3 mm or 5 mm or 10 mm diameter so each and every stages of operation how much uh, 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 mm is removed from your material tool so it may be monitored it may be simulated so so it, it not simulated it may be monitored through your sensor or through your vision system you have to capture those information then at which you have to ensure that whether it's properly done it or not so in process measurement then when talking about the real time performance that's what is a very very important word the fusion of the data that's what then sensor fusion is another important because one sensor is not at all you know even if you are if you are having your mobile phone we have a, a 15 to 18 type of sensor but some sensors are integrated some sensors are having a similar information a motion information but they are using for different purposes so the fusion of the data and the fusion of the sensors uh, nowadays will come in the picture that's what the next generation we call is a sensor fusion so one sensor is not enough for giving all information so the multiple sensors we will have to integrate it with uh, multiple sensors at which we are going to process then it will useful for the and different purposes then apart from this modeling because always the sensors have uncertainty measurement have always uncertainty because one time give you some information one time give you different information because depends upon the environmental condition depend upon the number of elements which are used in the sensor then the modeling of those things also is major major one. because one of the major area what i have worked during my system is one of the major one assessment of uncertainties we have to create a lot of models then the uh, other important thing is prognostics point of view because once you know that um, once um, uh, 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 if we are if we're deploying the sensors for different purposes prognostics purpose you know how you are going to monitoring your system uh, health monitoring of your system health monitoring of your machine tool health monitoring of any system which we are deploying sensors it will give you some kind of the information i am going to fail for another uh, maybe i am going to fail because uh, if you are running if your bear, bearing is running for the particular speed so it may be take lot of bear and tear so if you are measure using those bear and tear by the sensor it will say it will going to simulate because already you are processed with the embedded sensors are processed so if you are overrun for the particular hours it will say that after 3 hours i am going to become fail so it will give you the information so that the prognostics will come in the picture major role that's why nowadays uh, the health monitoring of your system is become one of the major one here sorry then the other things like advanced manufacturing technologies integration so the uh, yeah, in the measurement point of view these things are very very important one but thing is the measurement sense point of view that's what uh, when the smart sensor point of view we can say how we are going to uh, connecting this all measurements connectivity of measurements is one of the major one then the selection of key indicators key points key data are very very important one then the other important thing is intelligent data that's what key uh, i'm saying about the collection selection of key performance in terms of measurement point of view but thing is here in terms of how the information to be useful the intelligent data analysis point of view because when you are going to failure when you are going to arrive your peak or when you are going to um, um, when you are going to observe any any discrepancies in your sensing data so if you are giving a normal data so okay if you have any other fluctuation in your data so how this information to be analyzed so then how this intelligent data to be utilized for different aspect that's what the other important one then finally the measurement point of view the entire system what we have been talking about the the health management generally we called for the prognostics by purpose we have been using this particular smart sensors so as i told already so the sensor machines now we can say smart factory and stuff smart machines the smart machines have sensors so sensors means it starts from the visual way of whether it's running or not so it will show you the different kind of indicators if you could see here in this particular picture so it will show you green color uh, blue color or yellow color red color it show you about your machine is running or not so if you have any malfunction also it will put it indicate you start from so whether its machine is running or not the second thing is so the pressure sensors proximity sensors position sensors bio sensors rfid tag so everything will going to help you 
to since a machine machine is going to read you about your product and uh, saying about how much pressure i have to give how much uh, uh, how much force i have to give to machine uh, how much speed i have to run for this particular process everything to be monitored through all your machines all your sensor machine that's what we can say is a machines the sensors also have to be machines that's what in my in this particular perspective if you could see here if you want to monitor a, a laser machining process so you have to know that how many number of uh, sensing elements like it starts from camera then you are uh, you are uh, <coughs> a displacement device your table movement device then the you are capturing you are um, you are cam through camera through your illumination uh, technique uh, illumination uh, lighting technique then apart from this how we are going to uh, processing your laser lights then connecting your all your uh, identification of your uh, controlling your entire uh, movement so this is one of the typical setup uh, we have called a laser machine process point of view so controlling with the, all the aspect so where you have to draw start so you need some kind of trigger sensor then you have your table movement at which you ensure that we have achieved the particular position on so servo positioning systems camera to capture the real time observation then lighting technique will ensure the the weather is happening or not then finally the laser is processed so so each and every stage we have been using the uh, the sensors to monitor the data monitor the entire process then we have recorded then finally it will be used for the different purposes or different processes or for the uh, action for the, the next uh, action or next process we can use it for the particular data so here uh, uh, we called as uh, sorry yeah so uh, if you could see here uh, the changeable sensors because if you see coordinate machining machine what we have in our system also we have cnc type uh, coordinate uh, machining machine where you have to change a sensor for different purposes like if you are using a contact sensor if you are using non contact sensor whether you are using laser sensor but thing is the entire system to be common so you have to changeable so changeable sensors also major play in uh, smart aspect then the parallel sensors that another important one so if you are go for uh, as a sim as a scanning electron microscope or tim uh, so we have a uh, uh, so many type of different kind of combination of sensors will give you to lighting aspect then you are going to inclination aspect so uh, energy dissipation aspect they have a different kind of sensors and also the whether <coughs> sometimes maybe contact whether the contact the pressure also is very very important so these are the variable type of sensors smart sensors which are using in most of the high end uh, uh, measurement devices we have been using it is in mostly high end smart sensors changeable sensors parallel arranged sensors and we can say sorry yeah some issues i think so yeah oh okay sorry so these are the uh, the uh, most important uh, uh, sensors which i have been using in the uh, uh, small uh, coordinate machines in particular with the inspection point of view because the inspection part of a smart inspection point of view how these smart sensors its high end sensors highly highly sensitive sensors high precise sensors which i have been using for most of the applications but come to the um, um, in the, this particular point of view, like robots point of view so thing is uh, when talking about the uh, uh, robo assembly so how the micro positioning so thing is how we are going to vision uh, based how this all are converted into a knowledge base there you are connecting through your uh, your camera laser beam uh, or maybe you can say laser beam at which we ensure that which particular product we have to um process by the uh, robo so this integration entirely we connect to the knowledge base so that's what the mostly what we called as a uh, uh, yeah, system with what we called as uh, uh, multi functioning uh, sensing system so yet see uh, n number of there's a positioning aspect then uh, uh, laser um, uh, uh, laser positioning aspect micro positioning aspect these all are integrated so is a multi fusion so there it will be integrated within your software there it will going to create uh, it will going to create and give you the information about whether you have to move exactly on the micro level or not so these are the multi functioning uh, multi fusioning aspect also will come in the picture so 
so far what we discussed about the, the sensor uh, sensor point of view how what kind of uh, uh, measurement point of view the sensor measurement science point of view how the sensors will be now what is the meaning of sensor it's a question will come in the picture because what's a smart sensor what it is what it contains what it says so that's what you know that sensors are a device uh, that detects the real world condition or maybe some kind of element it may be converting one form of energy into other form you know that everyone knows but thing is how the smart sensors what it mean so the smart sensors contain the the necessary circuits that's the only difference the necessary circuit it converts the measured quantity into the digital form where the digital form can be used for different purposes initially it is not like that we are connecting through analog you have to capture those data then you have to process the cutting is how the data itself are digitized it may be communicable to the different devices so it includes the all information for embedded with the circuit embedded with the you can uh, connecting through any kind of a system so the information processing unit is, is like a mini computer working in your system that's what is a mini computer is a, a mobile phone so mobile phone in the model model of a smart sensor so that's what uh, mostly the smart sensor designed with virgin equipment manufacturer to measure the real mostly this one of the major one here whenever they are manufacturing they are always in line with their their own manufacturing unit own own uh, capable with unique with that particular system but nowadays uh, due to this raspberry by arduino development embedded sensors play the major role so the multi function point of view will come in the picture so the smart sensors are a simplified electronic design so that's what here the camera is detecting so once uh, the direction is happening so it, it is encoding then it going to transmit that's what this all are embedded in your once upon time the camera only giving the the image image to be captured by image acquisition device there we have to process the software and it is going to connecting to different kind of uh, the uh, tra data transferring element but here is not like this all are coupled together so the device if you could see here in our mobile phone if you see here our uh, um, yeah, our uh, in camera which we have using for the our laptop and other things so it will capture it will show you lot of softwares so uh, it will whatever the information you are capturing online you can process with the online itself you can interface with your the online itself so that's about So now they are simplified electronic design package ready to go for the application. So as I told already, the smart sensors are microprocessor driven. That's why it's a mini computer. It includes all your capabilities like communication. The first and foremost is how it is going to transmit your data. Then other important thing is the onboard diagnostics. So how it will give you the information about your current data. How it will give you calibrate itself and uh, diagnostic itself whether in having any malfunction how you are going to uh, uh, so operator know that how uh, is it sorry how the operator know that so sorry uh, the operator will know that whether the as uh, so a smart sensor is malfunctioning or not so this is one of the major one here so smart sensors are yeah microprocessor driven uh, is a kind of a mini computer so it having a features of communication and onboard diagnostics the first one <coughs> the second thing is it preserves it preserves the all kind of information then uh, it will going to uh, giving the signal condition to <coughs> any kind of system so uh, it is having a lot of local computing device because you no need of uh, uh, the data to be processed once you are collecting it from this one it directly give you whatever physical quantity you want whether you want in mm or you want in temperature or you want in uh, newton so you want in pressure whatever it will give you directly it will can communicate to the different purposes so the other important thing is uh, creating boundary conditions without human element this is a very very you can set your limits also i want work path the particular limit so everything you can set in the inbuilt um, in the smart sensors without the assistance of human operator then other important thing is it will enable the fault alarm that's what if you have any discrepancies or any discrepancies or any malfunction it will give you the alarm it always in your plc automation or in the, the automation the controller it will going to indicate that i'm not working it will show you some kind of uh, the indications i am malfunctioning so this is what very very important one. then as i told already so it is always complying with enabling with any kind of technology like wifi bluetooth or rf detect 
it will going to transmit. That's what whatever wherever you're going, you can use the USB. Simply the USB to be connected. So your operating system will recognize your somebody is connecting to you. Then it will going to transfer your data. Other way you can go to store your data. That's what. So the smart sensors play the major role. So when you're talking about the smart sensor, each sensor have a sensing element. Uh, you have all analog, uh, uh, front end analog to digital converter, everything. So everything should be linearized with the digital output. But thing is all are embedded. That's what all are coupled together, embedded with your board at which it will give you. Because if you're going to buy any system, you can understand that if you're buying any sensor, always embedded with a small electronic board. So there you can connect through your, your controller like any Arduino, Raspberry Pi, anything. So uh, the most important thing is once upon a time, uh, we have to, not once upon a time, so last two, three decades, what we have used here is, we are using separate connect connections, power connections for sensing element, then power connection for the uh, data transferring element and uh, uh, data converting element. But thing is here, it's all embedded, it consuming the less power, and the thing is always having a digital interface. That's a very, very important one. So no need to connecting your analog to digital. <clears throat> That's what, and talking about the smart sensors point of view, see the definitions point of view, you have a yeah, sensing element, you have your analog interface circuit, analog to digital converter, the bus interface for all entire cases. That's what you yeah, build in a, a circuit board aware. So sensing element only, it will go to project it. Other things are interfaced. So if you are going to connect to your, uh, your USB or something in the, in the serial board, automatically it will give you the information. It will go to one line is go for the power input to your sensing element. It going to exciting your signal, exciting your uh, voltage, and it will going to capture your monitor the entire uh, environment. And it will going to react, it will go to other uh, output circuit where, so uh, the, uh, the voltage will be converted for the different form. Then finally it will go to the whatever form you want, you can connect it through your serial bus. So this is smart sensor point of view. Other functionality like testing, identification, validation, calibration, diagnosis, these are the most important thing uh, when talking about when go detailly into the smart sensors. I'm not going to that much in detail, but thing is, so the testing, identification, calibration, all are possible in the smart sensing point of view. That's what, when talking about the role of smart sensors in manufacturing, so the all factory are going to have these uh, smart sensors for the monitoring analytics purpose. But how these smart sensors are to the cloud, so there you can communicating, so the entire system, control system, yeah, because they have a smart task, there they are connecting all your sensing data for do, do for some of them job. They are giving, giving the instructions. So based on the, the monitoring analytics point of view, the, based on the sensor input point of view, the sensor data point of view, you, you have to giving a task to your machine tools. That's why the smart sensors play the major role. Okay, so I uh, come with a small video. What makes it so it video sensitive? shows the how the yeah, yeah, basic type of sensor connected as a smart sensor. Smart sensor. Different than a smart sensor. <laughs> Before we get to that question, let's review what a base sensor is, what it does and how it is integrated into process control loops. A base sensor is a device that senses something. For many years, we've had sensors that can see, feel, hear, smell, and even taste. In the world of instrumentation and process control, we define a sensor as a device that detects changes in physical properties and produces an electrical output in response to that change. A thermocouple is a temperature sensor that will produce an increasing voltage across it when exposed to an increasing temperature. In industry today, thousands of thermocouples are connected to transmitters in temperature process control loops. In process control, we condition the thermocouple voltage and convert it to an industry standard signal that represents our control temperature range. Okay, so. What if we had a sensor that did more than sense singular basic physical properties? What if we had a sensor that also performs data conversion, digital processing, and can communicate to external devices and the cloud? In very general terms, a smart sensor has a base sensor, a microprocessor, is communication capable, 
and has some form of onboard diagnostics. Smart sensors are capable of a variety of functions and options. Smart sensors can perform self-assessments and self-calibration. They can detect issues such as sensor contamination, switch failures, and open coils. Some smart sensors are capable of multi-sensing and can measure pressure, temperature, humidity, gas flow, and more. Smart sensors play a very important role in the new era of manufacturing intelligence. It so we could see here, so how the base temperature sensor uh, converted as a yeah, smart sensor. So we have a communication model, a microprocessor, a small memory unit where it will be going to retry and for the purpose of calibration and testing and diagnostic purposes. And further, how we're going to communicate to the cloud. So sometimes a single sensor can be used for uh, to using of uh, the space can be used for the velocity like that. So pressure, temperature can be uh, integrated, uh, maybe corrected to uh, use it in the uh, for the industry 4.0. So thing is, uh, how we are going to connect to the uh, um, uh, cloud computing is another important one when talking about the smart sensor finder. Okay. So one more video you could see here. Yeah, this video is visible. Uh, this is visible, Bharti Raja. Okay. Bearings are a critical component of an overall system. Visible. So this is one of the bearings how they are monitoring for the progressive purposes. There are system issues that could result in unexpected downtime. Traditional condition monitoring considered. Yeah, sorry. Dream considered costly and time consuming is often overlooked for bearings, leaving problems unnoticed until the bearing fails. ABB's smart sensor for mounted bearings is a condition monitoring solution that lets the bearing perform its own health check and offers advice when it needs attention. Bearing operation and health parameters, including temperature and vibration, are regularly and accurately monitored. System problems can be caused by ineffective or insufficient lubrication, misalignment, or contamination. The consequences of these problems are increased bearing temperature, excessive vibration, and finally, unexpected breakdown. The sensor is simply threaded into the installation plug located on the bearing housing. No wiring is required and is configured in minutes. By safe and reliable recognition of changes in temperature and vibration, the smart sensor helps with quick problem identification, which reduces downtime and extends equipment life. Using the sensor's built-in Bluetooth wireless connectivity, data is transmitted by the user's smartphone or an ABB gateway to a secure cloud-based server. Here, the data is analyzed with advanced bearing frequency algorithms for identifying bearing faults or defects. The data is stored and displayed graphically within the ABB Ability Portal on a tablet or PC for further analysis. Indicators in the app use a traffic light warning system, red, yellow, or green, to clearly notify and alert you of any changes with the bearing. With the ABB Smart Sensor, plant maintenance teams can quickly identify potential breakdowns, which allows them to proactively schedule preventative maintenance or replacement before costly, unplanned downtime occurs. Welcome to the factory of tomorrow, an environment where the bearings perform their own health check, resulting in increased safety, productivity, extended bearing and system life, reduced maintenance costs, and ultimately reducing or eliminating unplanned stops altogether. Yeah, so this is also one of the most important smart sensors, which is uh, for the prognostic aspect. Uh, they have to monitor the uh, the system. So, if you have uh, uh, used in uh, most of the bearing sectors, they have used these kind of smart sensors. The next one more video. Why I show this one? Uh, these sensors are very important ones. So you have to visualize. Then only I have uh, shown a lot of videos. So the eyes of the factory, but many targets can be challenging for traditional sensors to see. And complex applications often require many different sensors to complete a task. How much downtime could you avoid if a single sensor could handle the most challenging requirements and even let you know when it needs maintenance? Solve more applications with greater reliability and fewer devices with smart sensors from Banner Engineering. 
Smart laser distance sensors with dual mode measure not just distance, but also light contact. This means the sensor can detect changes in both distance and surface contrast. This allows users to inspect multiple conditions with a single device, whether an object is present, whether multiple objects are stacked, and whether an object is oriented correctly. Dual mode also allows smart sensors to detect targets that other sensors can't, including clear objects, low contrast applications, and very dark objects, all with one very powerful device. IO-Link Communications adds even more advanced capabilities. Smart sensors with IO-Link yeah. remotely access So, other type of video. I think it's repeating right here, I think so. Sorry. Sorry, that one is repeating. Now the new one. The whole world is talking about Industry 4.0 of networking, of machines that control themselves, and of industrial processes that are self-optimizing. None of this would be possible without communicative, diligent data collectors at the lowest field level. We could see here what now uh, how the smart sensors in each and every stages of your operation uh, to monitor you with the, the entire process. These smart sensors utilize the globally standardized I.O. link communication protocol that SIG has developed, which allows them to be configured via the system controller and flexibly adjusted to suit each new production job. We call this efficient communication. But the smart sensors from SIG offer much more. Enhanced sensing ensures perfect detection and measurement results. Faults are detected automatically and compensated for. Auto-adapt simply corrects for any contamination on the front screen. This guarantees stable processes. Downtimes are our envy. To prevent unplanned system downtimes, smart sensors are equipped with diagnostic functions, thereby enabling predictive maintenance. And smart tasks increase the efficiency of your processes. Smart tasks provide the system process with just the right information at just the right time, thanks to remote signal processing directly within the sensor. These are the smart sensors from SIG. With over 70 years of experience and the largest sensor portfolio in the industry, we are one of the market and technology leaders in our field. Wherever you may be in the world. So uh, that's what the uh, for the smart sensors used for efficient uh, communication point of view, enhancing the integrations point of view. So uh, so exactly uh, for the current technology, current industry 4.0. So there they have been talking about the communication point of view is one of the most important. So efficient communication is a very, very important one and enhanced task. Task means a smart task. So whether it is going to, you have to predict it, whether how much number of comments we have finished so far. So how much comment will be produced, whether how you're going to inline, whether how you're going to change your design. So change the layout, uh, change the production schedule. So these things to be monitored. So through your smart sensors, it will give you the real time information. That's what is one of the major one. So to reducing your downtime, if you have any malfunctioning or breakdown, so immediately you have to predict it through your smart sensors. That's what we're talking here. So why do you want to go for the smart sensor? That's what, as I told already, so reduce to time because when the competition is very high, competition business is very high, very, very high. So uh, you have to go into the market. So the time you converting your product and go into the market is very, very important one for that. So you need your precise operations, uh, quality operations, improve your productivity. So for that, how this digital smart factors will help you to reducing time to go into the market. First one, the second one is, you know that the environmental conditions. So the human environmental conditions are very important. So even though you have a rough environmental conditions, how the smart sensor have enhanced uh, operations. The large range, that's why the connectivity point of view, the industrial automation, point of view, you have to always connecting the all your uh, communication devices. So the large range of sensors are major role here. And other important thing is cost is also almost important factor here because I'm not mentioning cost because the cost of any 
smart sensors become one of the most important one so the, even though the cost of technology of sensors are declining for the last 2 3 decades but however the when you are going for high precise and high quality so always difficult to work so uh, apart from this uh, the most important thing is worker safety because whenever we are making a smart sensors so we are minimizing human intervention however so it is going to enhancing the safety of your worker because now we have been working with some of the tech gm projects like uh, uh, crane assistance and monitoring there we are asking for the smart sensors to be deployed so whenever the crane comes down or uh, goes up so when we used by the operator so we are going to safely you have to use it because they are making n number of accidents so for that we are asking for the smart sensors for assistance and monitoring so we have proposed some of the ideas we have been working with the local industry hero tech so like that we started doing with uh, the safety aspect because the industries are looking about how these smart sensors are used for the, the safety purposes so generally so what it contains about the measurement and deduction point of view uh, with all the aspect i show some of the videos like deduction the object identification object or maybe orientation of the object so like that uh, and then counting and whether is filled or not so sometimes maybe a guarding aspect guarding means safety aspect also then the other important thing is most important function is positioning aspect mostly the smart sensor used for the positioning and orientation aspect because visual information by the eyesight by the human worker is up there the smart sensors are the most important for the micro vision because as a, our eyesight only can able to see up to 2 mm 3 mm 5 mm but thing is if you go micro level so only the sensors can able to see so that's what the most important one the small sensors functions measure direct guard and position so generally the types of uh, small sensors discrete type this is what the basic form of measurement part we have but the diagnostic that's what the next step in measurement so how it can be a diagnostic how it can be a predictable so that's what the when you going to take about the future point of view how it's the sensor to be embedded and uh, programmed itself <coughs> to process your data yeah yeah dynamic data to be processed each and every time what is captured so it like a small mini computer it will run it will going to communicate to your your all your devices so lot of attributes are there when talking about the sensors point of view because what kind of principle it works whether it's maybe a electro optic or electro magnetic or visual electric so these are the uh, technologies will ensure that um, so we have to use the new type of uh, the smart sensors the other important thing is the uh, dimensions are variable whether it's multiple dimensions like whether it can able to one uh, physical dimension like cable of uh, value the displacement velocity acceleration so like that uh, how uh, the how many number of variables we can able to measure the size of the sensor this is very very important one because always we need a smart and compact size and the other most important thing is data form whether it's maybe discrete or maybe a digital uh, so this is one of the important one so because sometimes i want a quantified data otherwise i want a data to be captured for each and every second so based on this i have to make a graph so depends upon so how uh, this always depends upon time domain how you are converting your uh, uh, your data into the frequency domain into the time domain so that is the one of the major one so that's uh, dsp digital signal processing will going to help you then intelligence that's what we are having a yeah, data processing unit and this calibration unit and testing unit in the uh, in your uh, smart sensor it's one of the major one here then other important thing is whether the sensor to be active or passive whether it's a self generated or maybe you need excitation signals so you are going to generating the signals uh, to receiving your signal then uh, all together we solved as a physical contact whether it's a contact type not contact type generally we called a, a non contact type only we are observing here then the environmental durability point of view is one of the most important factor that's what most of the time when we are looking for uh, the sensors uh, which are capable of working in particular temperature we have to always think about the environmental durability so robust design so this is the way you know, these are the attributes are very important one when talking about the, the sensing point of view the characteristic point of view as i told already sensitivity uh, what are the small change in your uh, um, input so how you change in your output so the sensitivity accuracy point of view and the, the errors uh, whether it's maybe a yeah errors which can be modeled or which can be not predictable so random or systematic errors and how precisely we give you the reproducibility of your sensor results so in this particular point of view you should always think about the characteristics of your the sensors other characteristics like that that's the same characteristics we can calculate into static and dynamic characteristics 
So why we go for the sensors as one of the major one as a, so far what we always talking about uh, the sensors point of view, why monitoring, reducing the labor cost, and efficient communication, enhancing the task, safety aspect, programming aspect, uh, quality aspect, precision aspect, avoid uh, obstacle avoided. There are so many reasons. But in industry 4.0, these are the things are very, very important. So minimum human intervention, safety, then um, uh, automation aspect, uh, because whenever it may be connected to different kind of uh, elements in your machine system, where the collision avoidance obstacles are there. So how we are going to avoid those things, how we are going to stop it. So then monitoring the entire process and the control of those entire process and reliability of the system. So that's what is very, very important one. That's what, uh, as I told, the sensors are always pervasive. So they are embedded in our bodies. So if you see automobile, if you see airplanes, if you see cell phones, if you see radios, or if you see any kind of industry is already embedded. So already we have living with the sensors. Without sensors, nothing is there because the sensors is going to rule the world. That's what, if you start from our smart automation, a smart home automation, we started slowly. Uh, we are using a, a smart uh, fans, smart mixy, smart uh, videos, a smart uh, TV. So we slowly started to working on these smart sensors, uh, whether we are knowingly or unknowingly, but we should understand with the basic principle behind these all sensors. That's why the next technology will go into the sensor fusion. That's why one of the topic I want to discuss here, because one sensor is not enough. This, this, this topic they have discussed almost in uh, four to five years, they have decades itself. But that time, due to the, the cost of the sensor, the sensing capabilities and the material capability of the sensor, what we have manufactured, not possible, but now it's emerging. Because uh, Honeywell, we done one particular project on uh, uh, using the LIDAR uh, for uh, to uh, monitor the uh, mapping the system when the helicopter is landing. If I have any moisture, any uh, when uh, landing, so any of the obstacles are there. So through mapping, we are trying to identify, but we are asking for multiple sensors, whether using the camera, uh, whether you vision camera. More so, a little bit wise. Sir, I think some okay, sir. Okay. Now it is now, okay. sir. Uh, I think uh, I'm okay, sir. So one sensor is not at all enough. So when we are working with the Honeywell, so they're asking for vision camera using LIDAR sensor, using the displacement sensor. You are integrated all the sensor. So you fuse the, all the data, then you are going to give the real time. You know that recently one of our chief defense staff uh, uh, accidentally happened in a helicopter in Kundu. The, because of uh, due to the cloud formation, I am not able to identify the, the technology. That's why they're trying. So this is a project what we got from Honeywell, but we're not able to not uh, complete the project. We're only giving only two solutions, but they're not accepted. So this is what the happening. Sensor fusion is one of the major one here. One sensor is not at all enough because some, some, sometimes the real sensors are very noisy. We have a limited accuracy, unreliable. So like that, what, sir, sir, so yeah, yeah. No, 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 proceed, 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 okay. sorry. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when you're going for the, the your sensors limited, we have go multiple sensors, but always expensive. But thing, uh, thing is, sometimes combination will give you effective results. That's what they're talking about the sensor solution point of view. So I think um, those who are having a research aspiration, you should think in this aspect, you should go with the fusion of sensor, fusion of data, at which how we are going to process it and for enhancing for different applications. So that's the way you should think, then you have to go. That's why the sensor fusion integration is one of the most important one. In the, in the integration point of view, with the robo sensor fusion, robo sensor integration, one of the, one of the emerging technology, uh, because integrating all, because that, that's what I told already, yeah, a lot of IoT platforms of us will integrating this all, <clears throat> all sensing data. So it will give you the dashboard kind of information, like in your car, you can show that uh, what's your speed, uh, what's your uh, your uh, um, uh, oil control, oil, there's a fuel, uh, uh, some fuel monitoring system. So it will show you all informations to you, whether you are um, seatbelt, beard or not. So like that. So it will have all the information in the dashboard. Similarly, we have the integration of all sensors and fusion information will give you the effective and you have to create a PACA data structure. Those who are working in 
data structure, data uh, data science, we should think in fusion of data and the fusion of integration of data in different ways. So that's why they're talking about the uh, the uh, sensor point of view. How we are going to selection the data? Generally, uh, there are so many factors. There are three major factors. One is a characteristic point of view, economic point of view, environmental point of view. But generally now, the economic factor is the most important one. The cost is very, very important one. And then other important thing is availability of the sensor. But we face a lot of problem. Whenever we are proposing for LNT technology, we're proposing for the camera with the size of 0.1 mm size camera for our diagnostic purpose of our one of the project but we got selected in TechGM. We got first prize. I'm one of the mentor for that particular project work. But we're not able to get that particular sensor, uh, sensing camera for the 0.1 mm. Even though the Israel is manufacturing that one, they're not able to give that one to us because of they're using for different purposes. That's what the things are totally different. So they have a technology, but availability is one of the major ones. So the economical factors are the most important one. Other characteristics are very okay. The other characteristics are depends upon your application, it will vary. But thing is, you should always think about the availability of these sensors. Then apart from this, environmental factors is all corrosion free, cumulatory aspect temperature because it will always react to the those environment the size then the over production also ruggedness and the temp test capability these are things you should always think about and also easy to calibrate this is very very important easy to calibrate that's another important factor when you're going to select in your sensors smart sensors in the point of view so uh, that's what is a pre-processing stage then uh, the next stage is um, uh, the other thing is called uh, sensing calcics accuracy and uh, other uh, uh, aspect calibration range cost and other things what they are discussed already. So come to the um, um, sorry I think really so uh, come to the categories of uh, smart sensors in smart manufacturing. So there are different categories. So machine control aspect, control component aspect, safety aspect. That's what they are categorizing. That's what uh, this is one of the major one robotics point of view and drives and controls point of drives and actuators control point of view material handling system point of view assembly on um, operations point of view so for that there are different kind of sensors what we have been using so temperature proximity chemical there are in number of sensors with all sensors uh, in our lab we should have i think it's available in the market also but the range sensitivity is different we have some few good range sensors also we have but thing is how we are using this sensor for our purposes. That's what we have to start to build the students in this particular perspective because we are living with the sensor. Even the person who's using mobile phone, you should know that how the gyroscopic sensors are working in your mobile phone. So if you go with a lot of apps, it will show you what's the current state of your sensor it is going to play. Whether I'm using the mobile phone, if you are taking the mobile phone also, it will go into exciting this particular frequency. How this particular uh, MI software, in my, uh, I think, uh, uh, the operating system will understand and how it causes those particular sensors. So, in the sensors, what we have here, for other types of sensors, so inductive, capacitive, magnetic, uh, photoelectric. But generally, what we call is capacity, what we are using in our mobile phone, capacitive sensor is one of the research field what I have worked in during my IIT Madras, capacitive sensor for cross section of micro profiles in my research work in IIT. Then um, using a photoelectric diffused uh, sensors and a photoelectric through beam, these are the common use these sensors, mostly in all kind of applications, in particular with uh, industry 4.0. Uh, these are photoelectric uh, retroreflective sensors through beam sensors. So the capacitive sensors is one of the non-contact sensors. You can see all your keyboards, all your mobile phone, all are capacitive touch screens only. So initially it's a resistive type inductive, but it's a, uh, sensitive is very, very sensitive, is very, very low, but capacity is very, very high. So uh, I don't go into the, the principles of capacitive sensor. This is what one of my research work I will carry to analyzing the micro profiles using capacitive sensor. That time I have tried uh, because I don't have any kind of small sensor. I have a separate and a pencil kind of element. I have a controller, different one. I have data cushion system, different one. So I have uh, uh, arranged all to couple together. I will create a micro profile with a range of uh, 10 micron. So I have uh, ensured that how you are going to cross in this particular profile by capturing my capacitive sensor. So the signal to be monitored. 
so the signal to be processed but nowadays if it is monitored it will give you some kind of blink that blink to be stored that stored information to be captured for the purposes but nowadays if the, uh, nowadays it all come together in the embedded sensor but in what we have used during particular time we have to process it we have to model it we have to ensure that it will happening or not so that's what uh, in the capacity sensor so there are a number of applications for detection of uh, <coughs> detecting the presence of broken drill bit like that you can go for a number of applications so it will show you whether uh, when you are using a smart sensor whether you have to observe it whether you record it you have to but ensure that So once the part is um, fixed, yeah, so the sensor will give you okay, so product is fixed. Whether it's correct orientation, that's also sensitive sensor. So like that, we have n number of sensors to be placed, <coughs> or maybe integrated sensors to be placed to ensure in the, the smooth operation. So that's what if you could see here already, I showed some of the videos I showed already. If you go with your keyboard, you can remove that. If the two plates are there, there one plate is fixed, one plate is a mobile one, a flexible member. If you press it, it will go to exactly voltage. So it will go into connect to your controller there. So we are type the keyboard one or two. So what are the functions altered on the, the particular voltage? So this is what they're talking here. So the capacitor sensors are the major role in most of the uh, small uh, industry 4.0. Wherever you're going, you can see the smart sensors in your mobile phone also. Even if you see the smart manufacturing, so how much displacement is happening? So they can use it also depth of cut. So we can use it to our capacity sensors. So there's a good range of operation and no contact is another important one. So it's not affected by colors, high speed response, high sensitivity is a purposes. But the problem is sometimes maybe the flower fluctuation and uh, uh, ambient temperature conditions also it will offer, but we can calibrate it also. It's a possibility. Other type photo reflective sensors, uh, as I told already, the sensing lights, uh, reflects the light, so it transmit the light, light or maybe reflect the light. So based on this, we have to observe that whether we can uh, we can presence or absence of your project. So emitting and receiving the light on the major source, it will also can identify your colors as possible from the retro reflective through beam sensors. So this are the one of the most uh, important sensor apart from the capacity. It's also mostly used uh, smart sensors in industry 4.0. If you could see here, most of the industry automation system, they have been using this particular uh, type of uh, photo sensitivity writing sensors. So these sensors will also give you the uh, all information about the presence or absence of object. So easily you can capture the all kind of informations, then we can uh, use it for the different applications like whether counting filled or not. So everything should be recorded. The spawn sensors are giving the information, then the data to be used for to in the dashboard whether how many number of uh, color, how many number of red color, how many number of components are defected or obstructed. Everything we can identify through these kind of yeah, smart sensors. So these are the uh, sensors mostly used for high resolution aspect, non-contacting, color identification is possible apart from the capacity. Capacity is high sensitivity, that's only advantage. Then the resolution point of view is good. So this is one of the major one in the photoelectric point of view. Then nowadays we are using uh, image camera vision sensors. Vision sensors are mostly for vision algorithms are the most important one. So mostly for uh, detecting and uh, extracting image to identification of images also. This also each and every sensor, that's, uh, those sensors are point type, these sensors are area sensors. So that's the way you have to differentiate from these sensors, the purpose at which part we have been using for different applications. The positioning aspect, we should go for point. Sometimes we can go for uh, uh, area sensors also. So nowadays area sensors like vision sensors they used for different applications of so detecting the phase direction that are using for identifying the objects. So they are using for different applications. Now it's emerging like anything. So that's why this embedded 
directly can get, uh, comparing with the result immediately show the information so this also another important one image vision type of sensors now available in the market so uh, apart from this uh, ultrasonic sensor as i told already ultrasonic sensor for uh, uh, using the sound waves or reflecting sound waves based on this you can identify this also uh, used in for the most of the chemical industries and gas industries they are using for reflective type of ultrasonic sensor this also highly sensitive uh, like uh, capacity uh, and um, uh, ultrasonic sensor also uh, cost wise is very very less but thing is this also used for presence and abstract for long range applications we have been using this kind of uh, ultrasonic sensor this also uh, this is another important one so most of the smart uh, factories they have been using this kind of sensors so ultrasonic sensor wherever uh, not feasible to go for uh, lighting or uh, go for uh, image sensor they have using this kind of ultrasonic sensor so the market uh, the industry 4.0 market that depends upon these kind of ultrasonic photo reflective capacity sensors useful for the different applications so here uh, yeah, ultrasonic sensor detecting object over the wide area because uh, the range we can say con non contact direction then uh, even unseen even surfaces also we can use it for uh, uh, the ultrasonic sensor these are some of the advantages and also other important thing is the sensor can use it for the stationary and moving objects compared with uh, photo reflective and capacitive sensor because dynamic movement um, dynamic condition always is typical when you are working with smart sensors but thing is we have to overcome that's what nowadays they embedded with uh, 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 the programming that they are over correcting this all then dynamic data acquisition and processing dynamic data acquisition <coughs> still play the major role if you go with those things the cost of sensor will going to make a high then the other safety sensors uh, like curtains that's what uh, they have been using so once like curtains cut off the entire system will going to uh, stop it then uh, it will go and start from where it started. So there are a lot of relays they are using for uh, uh, for the smart uh, sensors aspect. If you have, because when you're talking about smart factory, we have to ensure the safety aspect. That's what the safety sensors we can say. So these are the various safety sensors which have been using for the different applications. Apart from this, uh, if you go more technically uh, for the rotational speed, the velocity, you want the encoders play the major role. As a smart sensors point of view, lot of smart uh, sensors for controlling the speed and uh, measurement of torque. So they have been using this kind of encoders. So the encoders are most important for the rotation dis displacement aspect point of view. So this also another most important sensor. Optical encoders are mostly using in uh, most of the industry 4.0 applications. Other sensors also is there temperature, pressure, but most usually sensors are pressure sensors. Because displacement also we can use it, temperature also we can use it for those kind of sensors. Apart from other sensors also laser, laser is emerging, but laser is a little costlier, but uh, laser is emerging, fiber sensors, displacement, force sensors are coming in the picture. So come to the uh, the industry 4.0, uh, so a lot of challenges also is there. Uh, so uh, when talking about the smart sensors point of view, uh, flow of product, because uh, whenever you are, uh, in a smart manufacturing or industry 4.0, the flow of product, uh, flow of product depends upon the time and how we are going to access the features and the motion handling. So everything is depends upon uh, how we are going to measuring those things. So the challenges become each and every stage, every every stages of your operation or product flow of uh, operation. So the smart sensor plays a major role. So wherever possible, we have to add the sensors to monitor the uh, your entire flow of your product then the environmental is one of the major factor here environmental point of view because temperature humidity vibration contamination so you're going to affect the your smart sensors these are challenges how we are going to overcome that's what most of the researchers are working on the temperature uh, compensation of the sensors when you are going to do so that's also because if you could see here uh, if you are purchasing using a sensor, they are always saying you about the temperature range. So it will operate only on operating ranges, operating temperatures 0 to 30 degrees. If you go over that one, it won't give you the exact result. It's not safe. So even if you go with any medical, if you go with any medical assistance also, you can see a number of devices we are using to ensure our health, uh, monitoring our health aspect. 
if any one plant function will give you a different kind of information. So uh, that's what they are maintaining in uh, a perfect temperature. So that environment also is very, very important one. So small sensors point of view, that's also one of the challenges where we have been working. So diversity, uh, as I told already, multiple features, multi sensor institutions are coming to the picture, variety of products. So emerging like and new, new, the, uh, the uh, need of sensors become very, very high in the day. So this is one of the area where the researchers are working. <coughs> Even though available in the market, diversity of multiple features, you have think one sensor can be taken of Then the most important challenge I thought Summary of this lecture. So, you know the today's cyber community board. So, if you want to make a decent medicine question, so you need a screen that can be available to you. Practice in the first position. So, give you a smart practice story. Each of you need to be able to use a smart application. So, the story is going on. So, we thought there are sensors. The sensors are the heart of smart manufacturing. So, it becomes integrating the entire uh, manufacturing. So uh, it's a new generation of advanced sensors. We are going to connect it through the enhancing to enable the smart manufacturing and existing platform. Even though cost of sensors is built uh, affecting your your choosing your smart sensor, but anyway, but we it comes to the end user point of view, the aggregation point of view, chip response point of view, interface and communication point of view. So it can be overcome with the machine. I think is the finally the uh, most important thing is challenging is uh, how uh, big data uh, uh, IoT interconnecting interconnecting and uh, digitally or interfacing with your sensor through your uh, your CAD system. These are the challenges uh, because the challenges always based on how to choose your appropriate sensor which will be suitable to your application. So uh, from this perspective, so thank you, uh, thanks for your uh, so, um, once again, thanks to my teacher, uh, sensor, and the opportunity to talk on what I know about the basic of sensors. Anyway, somewhat I have covered, I said in a bigger topic, uh, so smart sensors uh, for the industry 4.0, somewhat I have covered. So, thank you for your question. And if I have any questions, please. So, thank you, sir. Uh, dear participants, now you can unmute yourself for any questions for the speaker. Please be interactive. You can ask questions now. I have a uh, yeah, question as for me, sir. Because every session, always I am connected to the pieces, but I am not happy for any day. Any questions, please, participants? If you are ask any questions, also, we will try to answer my Okay, sir. sir, I have one question. Yeah, sir. So even I work with uh, heat transfer where temperature measurement sensors are used in my uh, research work. Okay, sir. Where to mind where to find out temperature in different locations on the curved plate. Okay, sir. And uh, where to buy the sensors with uh, good accuracy? Can you name some of the companies where you can uh, buy? In this is a lot of industrial temperature sensors available, but what's your temperature range is very, very important one, sir. What the range you are expecting, what the range you are observing there, so that's very important one. And also where you're going to deploy, uh, because where you're going to fix it, that's also another important one. So size and, uh, size and shape also we have to do. So these things are we have to check, sir. But available in the market, a lot of sensors, are temperature sensors are available in the market, sir. 
mostly a lot of n number of companies but depends upon your opinion if you could uh, take any with the details i will show you i will tell you where you have to buy other for sensors are available in the market okay depending on the requirement you have to look for the suppliers Eons on sir, one of the Swiss based uh, uh, market is available sir. Uh, n number of sensors they have, so good range of sensors. Eons I think so I have touched with that particular person. Apart from this, lot of companies are available sir. But thing is depends upon your application sir. Depends upon your saying heat transfer. So I, I think around of or also temperature range you are expecting sir. Around hundred degree centigrade. Hundred degree centigrade is available in the market. But thing is uh, whether you need a dynamic data or at least a discrete data. Uh, continuous data or maybe discrete data. These things are whether you have each and every second when you are processing, you are capturing data. You need a great DAC, uh, DAC system. Otherwise, nowadays uh, sensing a uh, kind of USB, you can directly can connect to your uh, system through USB. You can directly you can monitor. So you are, they have a uh, app or software they are given, so you can monitor your data. That's also possible. Okay. Any participants, dear participants, you have any questions to ask? You can put in chat box also any questions. Yeah, sir. So this is what I title lot always when you are starting your presentation. I think I missed that one. So whatever exists, exists amount. So one accurate measurement is worth of thousand x per rupee. That's what uh, I always say. So it's a Cooper statement. When I am starting, I have to show the anyway. I am showing the last. Thank you. Uh, so, thank you, sir. Happy and sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, dear participants, in the next session, we are with us, uh, Mr. Rampukesh Shola, Managing Director, Distant Productive Solutions, Industry Expert, who is going to deliver a lecture. And uh, this session is shared by one more industry personnel, Dr. Nagra Jede, a senior CA engineer from Willful India, Pune. So don't miss this opportunity to listen to industry experts. So they are going to share their experience with us, a uh, teaching fraternity. So we'll be back at uh, 1.15 sharply. So we'll take 15 minutes bio break.